Welcome back to my channel. It's Joe Young here and I'm going to show you guys step by step how to paint another bright, colorful and happy landscape painting today on a 16 by 20 black primed canvas. It's an older painting that I covered up so you can maybe see a few little bumps in here from the painting below, but we'll get rid of that and cover it up with some pretty trees. I'm going to incorporate some waterfalls maybe in the distance. I'm not completely sure what I'm painting in. I just have a few things that I know I want to um, add into this landscape. And I just covered up my old painting um, with just some thin folk art black paint. We're going to be using some uh, neon paints here, some of my luminous neon paints. Or Holbein, their rose and opera pink that I'm going to be using today. I'll have a full list of all the colors and brushes below this video in the description. Also going to be using some titanium white, green gold, cerulean blue and some turquoise and we're going to get started right away i'm going to be creating the background with a large brush to begin this is a three inch chalk brush you can use any large stipple or blending brush of your choice it doesn't have to be this exact one i'm using today it's just to get some um, coverage in a large area quickly so it's a, my brush is a little bit wet and i'm going to start by taking my cerulean blue and i'm going to just start to create little swirls I just like to have fun and play around with my paint and my my brushes when I'm creating. I like to create all these pretty little shapes and twist my brush around. So I'm going to add a little bit more coming around on this side. And then whatever I've got going on up here. I want to incorporate in down below in the water. So I'm just going to do a little brush back and forth, pull and sweep across the canvas. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise, just tap into my dirty brush. It's got cerulean blue on it. And then a few areas. I'll just dry brush this color out so we get some softer, blurrier areas here. Okay, and I'll just start overlapping. I'm going to take both blue and turquoise this time. And then right below, pull and sweep. We can also kind of just line it up here, press, pull and flick, and then sweep across. Now if you pick up a little bit of water on your brush, you can get more of a, a looser feel. And that will just create that soft reflection in the water. All right, now what I wanna do without washing my brush off, I'm gonna take some of my green gold, a little bit of white, and just the other colors along the side here and I'm going to start choosing a few areas just a tap so I can use my brush straight full like that to use the whole circle or end of the brush or I can turn it on its side and kind of roll to create these interesting weeping willow types of branches. A little bit of water, just to help get that weeping willow hanging kind of a look. Go right down to the bottom and then we'll sweep across for the reflection in the water. I'm just going to take my large uh, flat brush. This is a number 12. I'm 
And I'm just getting a bit of water on my brush. And I'm going to pull some lines back and forth to create some ripples in the water. And then just a little tap here. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna and black, and I'm going to create some branches. And to create the branches, I'm going to be using this round brush, a number two. I'm going to get my brush wet. And here I've got burnt sienna and black. So I'm just gonna go up here. Maybe even take a bit of that blue, a little bit more black, a little bit more water. I'm just twisting, going like this with rolling it between my fingers. I think I want to get a little bit more black. So we want to create branches in front and also behind. And I'm not even worried about going over top of wet paint right now. Don't think about that. Just apply some branches and then take a little bit more black and make some of these a little bit darker. Okay, now I'm going to go into my green and white again using this oval mop brush. It's a little bit wet. And I'm just going to tap. Get the end of my brush like that. And I'm just going to start tap, tap, tapping. Straight up and down over top of some of these branches that we've just added. So we get that layered 3D effect. And then if you want, you can do a little tap and then pull. And we can just have some coming maybe right down to the water's edge here. We can use a little bit more white where we really want it to show up better. And we'll have some coming down here from the top. I love weeping willow trees. I think they're just, they create so much atmosphere and mood. Very tranquil. I'm just going to go back to my flat brush now that's a little bit wet and very lightly pull 
gently pull. To create a little flurry effect going on. Just take a little bit of this light green and add a little reflection. Maybe just a little, little tap right in front here. So I like to do a few different uh, brush strokes and techniques for creating the reflections in the water, the side to side, and then just kind of pulling and flicking down. Now I'm going to create some lighter tones here. I've got one of my round mop brushes and I'm going to take my turquoise with a little bit of that light green and I'll just start adding some little treetops here. I love this brush, it just makes the most delicate looking treetops. I'm going to take a little bit more blue this time. And then we'll add little drips, pulls and sweeps down here. Come in a little bit of this paint, soften that up a little bit. So whatever is left in my brush here, my brush is pretty dry, so it's just a dry brush, continuous circles, and blending that paint out. It just gives it a, a more of a background feel to it. It blurs it up a little bit, and then we've got that little bit of light green there. So I just Grabbed a little bit more of that here. You can tap lightly like that. Tap that color out. And then pull down and across. If you want to go up, bring it up. You can turn your brush the other way and do that. I'm going to go back to my black and my burnt sienna. So we've made a nice deep dark chocolate brown color here. And I'm going to go right in here. Maybe we've got some rocks. So we just push up, create little half circles. And then we can cover those in some moss. So just, oh, we've got all this green here. Don't want to waste it. And then just go up and over. Layer. As much as you want. I see a birch here, it's just coming to me right now. I'm gonna go with it. I don't 
know, with spring kind of in the air, well, where we live, spring's on its way. We've got flowers starting to bloom here. I just always get that Monet uh, vibe with his beautiful bridges. We just got a little something back here. Just a small little bridge like that. We'll do three. Three arches like that. I'm going to actually switch over to my shorter uh, flat brush. Put those colors in there again. Go across the top again. I'm going to just make that disappear. And let's go below and do a little subtle reflection. One, two, three. It doesn't have to be completely mirrored as long as we have an indication that we've got this beautiful calm. What this, the water creates is just a sense of calmness when it's still like that. And now I'm envisioning some of that beautiful purple wisteria that his water gardens are famous for. I don't think I'm going to do too much more to this bridge. I think that um, for how far away it is, the highlights and shadows are fine just like that. I don't need to do any more black or anything like that. But what I want to do is just add these little posts here that have the wisteria above them and then there's a little bar that goes above and it has that wisteria so i'm going to use some violets the only purple i have right now so that's why i'm using i chose this one but you can use and this these are uh color by felix paints they're really really nice thanks felix for uh generously sending me a uh, whole set of your paints. I, re I really recommend them guys. They're beautiful paints. Okay, so I'm going to use my smallest mop brush. It's a tiny little mop brush. If you don't have one of these, just use any filbert brush that you have. So a filbert brush with a nice round soft end to it. And if you have one that's a bit older and puffier on the end, even better. Don't throw those out when that happens to your brushes because you can use these uh, for foliage and little stipple brushes. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of that violet with the blue. Okay, and I'm going to go and just start adding. It's far away, so we want to keep this really small. A bit like that, and then we're going to add it in the water too. Less in the water. I'm going to my white right away. Mix up a little bit of that. And this is gonna kind of just blend in. And what's happening is this is a little bit, even this brush is a little bit too big to work with. So I'm probably gonna go over to one of my filbert brushes So I've got my filbert brush here, and I love the color I get. More of like a grape purple color, wisteria color. When I add the cerulean blue, violet, and white together. So just little taps. I know this is going to dry a little bit darker. I 
because it's painted on a black canvas and in general it's just how um, acrylic paint dries and I've got a little bit left over in my brush so I think it would look quite pretty to dry brush some of this purple over part of the blue and I just picked up a little bit of white to make that soft purpley color and incorporate it down here Just get a, this is the first brush I grabbed. It's a flat brush, but you can use any brush. A little bit of water. And just blend that out. This is sort of a, a misty look back there, doesn't it? And then I wanna give this more of a romantic, dreamy reflection in the water. So I want to blur it up a little bit. I want to take some more blue now. So there's so much blue up there and we don't have a lot of it down here. So that's all I'm doing right now is just adding some more of my cerulean blue. here as well because you can see it peeking behind the trees, can't we? I'm just going to add because it looks like it just all of a sudden stops right there. So I'm just going to kind of get it mixed in there, disappearing off into that weeping willow. And we'll tuck a little bit over here so it disappears there as well. Okay, so I'm going to add a few more highlights here on these rocks. Just take those colors again. Green gold, a little bit of white. Looks very mysterious back there and inviting. I love it. So much fun to paint on a black canvas, you guys. You just get such a dramatic feel of light and sense of light and shadow. And I have quite a few videos. Just gonna add a little reflection here. I have quite a few videos painting on black canvases. I should just make a whole playlist of them, but if you guys want to see more, just check through my channel. Now, I know there aren't any waterfalls that I know of um, in Monet's water gardens, but in mine, there's going to be, so I'm going to take uh, we can use a few brushes. You can use a fan brush, a filbert brush. I'm going to use, lately I've been enjoying using flat brushes for um, painting waterfalls. And I'm going to just go into my white. A little bit of blue. We, all we want is just a lighter color than the background. It needs to show up. I'm going to get some water on my brush. The only place we want the paint to be is mainly on the tip. Let's just start some waterfalls back, back here. And they drop down and then flow out through here.
all I'm doing is going back for a little bit more water. So that the tops of the waterfalls show up a little bit more. I'm going to come up top and create a light purple color, similar to our Visteria. And I'm going to add some purple, purpley blue waterfalls up here as well. I'll take a little bit of white. I'm going to scumble out a little bit like that and then I'm going to soften that. Just got my large flat brush. It's a bit wet. And then just pull so I've got a little bit more light in here. On those waterfalls. I'll add a few pretty bushes of pink and purple and rose down there. And I like to use a, I like to use an oval. I wish I had one just a little bit smaller than this. Uh, it's not quite the same as a filbert. A filbert's uh, like half the width. This is a it's like a round mop, um, but it's of a rounded oval shape and what I want to do is take some of this beautiful lumen this is the neon luminous rose if you don't have this color don't worry guys you can use magenta too or quinacridone violet and I'm going to start look at that just looks so pretty against that green start tucking in beautiful luminous rose flower bushes here peeking in and around these these rocks let's not forget about the water a little bit there i'm going to take a little bit of my a little bit of white in there and because this would dry, not this color, it would dry dark, like a dark purple. So to counteract that, if that makes sense, we need to add a little bit of a hint of white in there so that it dries to a nice bright color. We don't want to lose this. This is very pretty. A nice addition to all the green, very complimentary. I'm going to loosen, loosen this up. Okay, now I'm going to take a bit of my pink. And, hmm, I'm not really sure where I should add this. Maybe I'll add a little bit. Little bits in here. Take a little bit of white with it. Mix that all up. We've got some pretty Japanese maple trees. Could have one that comes out here, and I'll add the branches in the tree trunk after. Move 
very delicate little pull and sweep in the water. Okay, so I'm going to take my round brush again with my burnt sienna, a little bit of black, a bit of water. I'll just do a few branches in here. A little bit more of the burnt sienna. Now over to a uh, filter brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white this time in with my pink, get it on the tip of my brush. And just add a little bit more here. Then I'm going to take a liner brush. I'm going to add some lighter tree trunks. Faintly scumble in indication of a few back there. Maybe a little bit off to the side here. And then I'm going to take my filbert brush, a little bit of that color again, and very, very gently just make that again. Very gently add some little blossoms on the top. For my sunrise, I'm going to use my number 12 flat brush. I'm going to use a little bit of water. Get really, really loose. And from here, I want the light source to be from right up top here. Pull on an angle.
You can do as many as you want. I'm just going to put one more and this will dry a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm gonna call this one done, guys. I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. This was really, really fun and therapeutic to paint. I hope you enjoy painting it as well. And don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below if you found it helpful or inspiring, and subscribe to my channel for more art inspiration and techniques. Take care, everybody. See you next time.